So y'all have a, something like 10 tubes of calcium gluconate in each chem room. My dream would be if, uh, like almost all of those, you took to the ER. That would be overkill, but it would be nice to have. You wouldn't want to take everything because then somebody else might get an exposure. <laughs> okay, so um, do y'all want to demo this? It's basically you got a cream. You don't have any noxeme or anything? Okay. All right, here's your calcium gluconate. This is what y'all's looks like. So you open it. It's a tube. And you put it on the affected area. You squirt it out. And then with a gloved hand, you just gently rub. There's no reason to rub hard or fast. You just gently rub. And then when the layer gets thin, squirt some more on. Uh, this stuff is completely safe. It's impossible to hurt somebody with it, and you should never need to fear it for any reason. If you happen to get some of the gel in somebody's eye, it's okay. So uh, don't be afraid of this. Don't be afraid of oxygen. And you just continuously rub it, and then you replenish it. Uh, use your judgment. The, the more, the better. That was your demo. Okay, so now we're going to switch to everything except the face, okay? The only difference here is that all of a sudden Zephyrin becomes one of your options if you want to exercise it. Otherwise, it's all the same. Assure scene safety, put on gloves. Definitely remove anything that's got chemicals on it, any clothing. If in doubt, take it off. Don't be shy. Then you irrigate with water until somebody brings you either, either Zephyrin or calcium gluconate. And by the way, if you happen to have a mood swing and switch from one to the other, there's no harm in that. I mean, there's nothing, nothing wrong with using them both. So uh, if you're going to use Zephyrin, it's better if you ice it. Your Zephyrin is stored in the refrigerator in the chem rooms to keep it cool. And you do either of those continuously until medical care arrives. Now, it's nice if you have a hand exposure to use Zephyrin, because then you can do this. That's really nice. Then you know you're not missing some crevice. You know, in, the webbing in between your fingers absorbs stuff really easily, and it's hard to access well. And furthermore, if you've got a large hand exposure, you're rubbing here, and meanwhile over here it's soaking in. So a basin with ice Zephyrin is really, really good for hand exposures. It's what I would recommend. Uh, by the way, chemically, Zephyrin uh, binds fluoride slightly better than calcium gluconate does. Now, if you have, let's uh, say you have a chest exposure, act fast because your colleague's probably going to die. But you rip off the clothing, you got the exposed surface. It's hard if you have, you know, half your chest exposed to use this stuff. So once again, we get into the Zephyrin option, which should be seriously considered. So the way you do that is you take anything, anything that wasn't exposed, cloth, a towel, gauze, anything, and you flop it in Zephyrin and then you put it on the wound. You put it all over the wound, the, the exposed area, and then you just dribble new Zephyrin on continuously. So um, you do have to use some type of gauze or pad and then dribble the Zephyrin onto that if it's on your body, like your torso. Okay, so uh, these are third, mostly third degree burns. That's third degree. And any of anything we've talked about today will do it. Strong bases or strong acids, HF or non-HF, can do this. Obviously, if this was HF, this person's going to die because of all the fluoride that also got absorbed. You don't die from these wounds, but you die for other reasons. There's your Zephyrin, which will change names in a few months. Sorry. You don't dilute this, you don't need to think about it, you pour it in a basin and use it. I suspect that uh, the chemists out there will conclude that uh, an expiration date on benzalkonium chloride is probably bogus anyway, I suspect. Like aspirin has an expiration date and my understanding is it lasts almost forever. Okay, uh, so now we're gonna uh, scan non-HF, okay? So the only difference with skin non-HF is there's no reason to bind any fluoride, so it's all about water. 
and you simply uh, remove anything that was exposed and irrigate continuously till the ambulance gets there. The science is if it's an acid, pretend there's no ambulance, not going to have one. If it's an acid, it's overkill, but you want to irrigate really good irrigation for 15 minutes if it's a base 30. Okay, so now we're almost done. You guys, I really appreciate your patience. I want to give you all insight into what the doctors do. So now we're off uh, first aid and we're on the medical treatment. So you go to the ER and they basically base it on pain. So if you're getting pain, by the time you get to the ER, the pain isn't from hydrogen, it's from fluoride. So the doctors use that as a, uh, uh, they titrate their treatment against that endpoint. So if the patient hurts more than 30 minutes from topical, so you walk in, you're rubbing, you still hurt, and 30 minutes later you still hurt, topical isn't going to work. So then they start injecting calcium gluconate under and around the wound, and it's, that's miraculous. The pain instantly disappears, and they know they've got it right. So they have a really nice symptom to titrate against. Then if there is 160 square centimeters, prophylactically, they're going to start an IV and start giving you calcium and magnesium. And then for the eyes, they will irrigate with 10% calcium gluconate, same stuff that was in a gel. If it's inhalation, excuse me, I'm going backwards, aren't I? Sorry. <laughs> All right, if it's inhalation, uh, you can deliver calcium gluconate in a mist. Uh, we have that in OCMED. It's called a nebulizer. Same thing asthma patients sometimes use, but different drug. So the doctors and us will allow you to inhale calcium gluconate, which tends to prevent the pulmonary edema that we talked about. And then if it's a skin exposure, they'll inject calcium gluconate. And if there's any involvement of the nails, they have to take the nail off. It grows back. So uh, you all remember this cat? There's an HF exposure and he hurts. He hurts way more than he should hurt based on the size of the wound. His whole face is throbbing. He feels terrible. So the doc will then inject, there's a syringe, this is a needle, inject all the way around and under that wound with calcium gluconate. And you can overdose on injected calcium gluconate. It is possible to give too much and hurt the patient. So these are finger exposures. Obviously this guy has an IV. Sometimes they will actually put a catheter in the artery that feeds the exposed part. And then they'll feed calcium gluconate into that artery and then the blood carries it everywhere it ought to go. There's the exposure. So this guy's going to lose his uh, finger, probably lose his fingers from about here down. Because it'll erode bone. It goes straight to the bone and starts eating it away. Okay, so in summary, you know, think about how to prevent all this because you can see it's a big deal. Uh, always protect yourself and ensure scene safety. Be very fast. Be very fast. For everything that does not have HF in it, the primary actions are to irrigate aggressively and make a decision about oxygen. Everything but HF, the only thing you do is irrigate. If it's got HF in it, you irrigate immediately, then start binding fluoride as soon as you can using calcium gluconate or zephyrin, but not for the face. And oh, by the way, if they need oxygen, give it. So it's actually not as complicated as, you, as it feels sometimes. It's pretty simple. There's your first aid supplies. There's calcium gluconate. There's eye uh, irrigation. This is IV fluid for irrigation. That's a mask. Uh, you should play with your, you should every once in a while look at your stuff. Pull it out, hold it in your hand, and look at it every once in a while. I hope that periodically you all will read your quick references and play with your toys. It helps a lot, and that way you can help your colleagues better. Okay, um, and then on the door, remember, this Honeywell document is very good. If you ever want to, you know, learn about it, just pull it out and read it, but you don't have to. Okay, here's your quiz. So the first step in first aid is to call OCMIT, true or false? False. It's a sure scene safety, call 911. Strong bases require prolonged irrigation. True. Mm -hmm. Weak solutions of HF may not cause initial symptoms. True. Typically, you get a pinhole in the glove, and at midnight you wake up and your finger's throbbing. If that ever happens to you, go to the ER.
Strong solutions of HF cause immediate pain similar to other strong acids. True, true. The proper treatment for facial exposures to HF includes Zephyrin soaks. False. An eight inch by eight inch HF exposure is potentially fatal. Yep, that's true. Fluoride ion binds calcium in the blood and can lead to fatality. True. The mechanism is heart irregularity. Uh, calcium gluconate is substantially more effective than zephyrin at binding fluoride ion. False. Non-HF acids do most of their damage in a very short period of time. True. Thanks, everybody. I really appreciate it. Yeah, good to see you guys. I appreciate it. Thanks. Thank you.